boating started when I was seven year old and my dad helped us to make a, a boat and um, my dad was very practical he liked to work with wood and then when I was about 14 I went into woodwork lessons with Mr Walker and Mr Walker was very very influential in the work that I did in fact I've got a piece here and that was a piece that I turned when I was 14 year old and it was made up of just pieces of wood glued together and then turned on a lathe very roughly but um, it stood the test of time and uh, I'm coming up 57 now so it's uh, it's still done well for its time. My mother had it for many years and now I have it for demonstrating and teaching to show students what can be done at an early age. Well I served my time as a joiner and uh, when I came out of my time I was very fortunate I got the opportunity to teach some nice night classes at New College Durham and um, I was there teaching night classes for around about six months and then I got a full time job and then I spent 26 years teaching apprentices through colleges and some training establishments before I moved into the wood turning side which initially started as a hobby 15 years ago but after three years I realised I wanted to make it into a career. I think wood it's very tactile it's especially when you work with it in the wet state you can manipulate it you can you can you can bend it into shape and what have you. I can show you another one here. This is a, a larger hat. This is a full size hat. This one I wear actually, and you can see that the the brim bends up nicely on there and weighs around about what nine ounces, 150 grams, 200 grams. So it's the same weight as a normal hat. And I think with the blues balls, making them from wood in the style that you want to design yourself and then being able to play them is just an added bonus. Wood turning is a method of taking a piece of stock, either a branch or a square section. I've got a square section here for example. And that piece of stock you will take and put onto a lathe. The wood will spin round on the lathe and you'll produce a tool to the edge of the material on a tool rest. And in fact it's, it's a machine that's in a workshop. It's probably the safest machine in a workshop because every woodworking machine with the exception of the lathe has a cutting edge that's revolving and you feed the wood to it whereas this you are in charge of the cutting edge and you feed the edge to the wood. It turns it into a, a cylinder from a square so you get a cylinder like that from a square piece of wood then you can either hollow it out into a ball or in the case of the little hats that I do I can turn it down a, into a hat. This is a basically a ball with a brim and it's turned from a wet piece of material and bent on a bending jig to get the, the brim to bend. And this one's had some pyrography. A friend of mine who does artwork with pyrography has done this for me in uh, a fishing scene because that's another hobby that I have, which is fishing. On down to San Antonio. When I was a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy. Don't ever play with guns, but I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. I bet there's rich folks in a fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars But I knew I had it coming I know I can't be free But those people keep on moving And that's what tortures me Teaching apprentices more so when I first started because we had groups of around about 8 to 12 by the time I finished, the group sizes increased so much that you were teaching groups of maybe 24 to 30 students. And, and really, that number of students, you don't teach them. You end up just making sure that they don't have an accident. And um, I wanted to come into teaching again and work with people who, small groups of people who really wanted to learn. So that was why I decided to take the opportunity to start and teach people privately and um, I've done it now for 12 years.
I do a lot of mainstream wood turning, which is your spindles, your balls, um, your goblets, your boxes, but I've specialised in the hats and now I've specialised in musical instruments that I call blues balls. The blues balls, I was inspired after watching a programme, it was, um, it would be 19, it, it would be 2016, I watched a programme with Jules Holland and on it was a guy called C6 Steve and he was playing what was called a cigar box guitar and um, the cigar box guitar had three strings and I thought well I wonder if I could do a ball and a neck on the lathe. Combine the two together, put three strings on them and play it like a three string cigar box guitar. I did and to the best of my knowledge I don't know of anybody else who's making them. It's, I didn't make them to sell them, I made them to sell the training because what I want is for people to come along, turn a ball, turn a spindle put the two of them together, put three strings on it, and then have a go at playing, and, and it's fun. I've got two students, um, that were interested in making the blues balls and they made the blues balls and then we get together on a Tuesday night we call ourselves the wooden tops or at least my wife called us the wooden tops and uh, we have a bit of fun. With a view to are demonstrating at Harrogate Shore. Harrogate Shore has a woodworking show every year and um, we thought we would write a song called the Harrogate Shore song and we used the verses to be able to talk about different people that did the show and had done over the years but our main focus for it was to ask for a donation. We had 50 CDs to ask for a donation from people for a CD and we used it to raise some funds for Help the Heroes, H3H, and the Blind Veterans, because I have two students. One is, is a veteran and the other one is a veteran who's blind. So he actually has had funding from the Blind Veterans to teach. <laughs> has created sufficient income to create a happy living but from a from a, a health point of view as well the stress levels are far less when you're working with less students and um, it's just an enjoyable way to earn a living. I think it's because you can actually produce something fairly quickly and um, it's also it's very therapeutic I'll get a lot of students that come here and uh, it's good for stress management and the products that you make, they're nice to look at, they're practical, but they're also can be a piece of art as well. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars, but I knew I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those people keep on moving, and that's what torture's me.